Hi everyone, Marv Eisen from Timeless Dollar. When you're trading S&P E-mini futures and you're ready to make a trade, what exactly is it that you think about before you pull the trigger on that trade? Some people make a trade based on seat of the pants. Other people have a more thorough knowledge of the market. I have a few, a few things that I think about that I keep in mind before I pull a trigger on the trade. And before trading, let me just say one thing. Some days are easier for trading than others. Here's a case in point on April 1st. This was a particularly difficult day to trade, in my opinion, maybe not for you. But let me tell you my thought process so you'll understand. There are basically four trades that I use, and four, that is four setups, and there are key tools that I also use in determining whether or not a trade is going to be successful. And I'm going to go through those very quickly. First of all, I use the previous day's close. And on, on April 1st, that was 45.26. The next thing I use is the calculated trading zone that I get from calculating Taylor's book method. The next thing I look for is an indicator, the stochastic. And I only use the stochastic. And indicators, there are hundreds of them. And everyone has their own personal preference. So excuse me if I omitted what you prefer to use as an indicator. I use the stochastic. The four, and the four trades that I use are the gap trade, the trend trade, the time and price trade, and the momentum trade. The days that are easiest to trade, in my opinion, are days where the prices trend in a particular direction for a sig significant length of time, for a significant amount of time. As you can see on April 1st, that really didn't happen. We have a day that opened and closed only five points apart. The open over here at 45.44 and the close was down here, 45.38. All right, five, six points. So there wasn't much actual movement to the market. And the trading was narrow as well. My trading zone forecast a much larger range than actually happened. Now going over the trades on this particular day, and as I said originally, I found this day to be a particularly difficult day to trade. And so I withheld it except for the first, except for one trade. And that's right at the open when there was an opportunity for a gap trade. Prices opened here at 45.44 and the, the previous close, Thursday's close, was 45.27. So that was a, a, a trade that I took advantage of and it worked out. But the rest of the day, what was there? And remember, I'm looking for a gap trade. That happened. So that leaves me three other trades to look for. The first thing I look for and this is even before the indicator, is the setup. A time and price trade is where prices move a certain number of points for a certain length of time, then consolidate for a while, could be a half hour, could be an hour, and then move in the same direction for the same number of points. That's a time and price trade. Very common trade. And it has a, tail, a telltale setup. The next trade is a trend trade. The momentum trade, the last trade, was at the end of the day, just about 10 minutes before the close of the day. Oh, and I, I do want to mention as an illustration, there was a time and price trade. I, I didn't like it because the, the range was tiny. And that's right over here, right over here, when the market moved up six points, consolidated for about 20 minutes, and then moved up uh, just about the same. Actually, it was a little more than six points. But there was a similarity in range between the movement here and the movement here. But as you can see, not an easy trade to look at and to determine whether it's worthwhile, and especially with the small number of points that, the, that was involved. There are only five points in between each horizontal line on this chart. Let me give you another example on the one-day chart of the S&P, why this was a difficult day to trade. And here we are on the S&P for... Friday, April 1st. And here's the candle right here. 
It's sort of like a hammer, but the range is very small. And this happens not often, not often. It happened here. It happened here on March 21st. Again on, well, not really over here. Again on January 25th. So these types of days do not happen often. But what does happen often? A typical day is where you have uh, an open and close that are significantly apart from each other. And so those are the days that I consider the easiest to trade. But back to the main point of this video, what do you think about when you execute a trade? I've already told you what I think about, and I suggest that if you're not going to be over trading, you'll assess the market with some parameters in mind and only make the trade when you have a very good idea that the trade is going to be successful. Certainly, uh, support and resistance would, be, would have been great to see, uh, on the on the three minute candle right over here, there was no real support and resistance. Maybe over here again. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention over here. But really, the day was so choppy, up and down, that uh, I deemed it not a great day to trade. And I just basically thought that there was no point in making a trade on a day where prices were proving difficult to manage. So that's my video for the day. When you make a trade, when you're ready to pull that trigger, what is it going through your mind? What are you thinking about? And what information do you have in order to indicate that you should make the trade? Thanks for watching this video. Trade safely, and I'll see you the next time around. Marv Eisen from Timeless Dollar.